update that we're going to be talking about is from the Nashville Business Journal. And uh, three or four of the articles that we're going to be talking about are from the Nashville Business Journal uh, because they're probably the best resource when it comes to new openings and closings of restaurants. Uh, But we're going to be talking about two places that are found in Wedgwood, Houston. One's going to be a Japanese-themed bar that just opened on May 16th, and this is called Present Tense. Uh, They're going to be serving their own sake, which is amazing. I'm super excited to try this. Uh, If you can go ahead, Aaron, and show my computer, this is an omelet uh, that you're going to be able to find here at Present Tense uh, and seaweed. Is that the omelet? I believe, yeah. So if you scroll down, it says... Uh, shareable. I think that's no, that, that that's is not, not the, the omelet. omelet. <laughs> no. I was like, okay, well, that looks like a weird omelet, but it still looks decent. Yeah, I, I'm the seaweed exactly, looks better. Yeah, the, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but uh, scallop hand rolls. There you go. Um, but uh, it's this is pretty cool. This is open now in Wedgwood, Houston. Uh, so if you've been looking for an amazing place for a sake bar and this kind of French-Japanese cuisine mix, uh, then this is your place. Which We're going to try and visit this really soon. Which is a really interesting fusion. It, it, it is. I'm sure it's seen more in Japan than it is in the United States. Maybe some of the larger cities um, have this. Uh, so they uh, have you talked about this already, that they have their own sake brand? Yeah, yeah I said they have yeah. their own sake. Yep. It's uh, called Pure Land Sake. Uh, in 2023, it's made in Kyoto, Japan. Um, and it will debut at present tense. Uh, so that, that is pretty cool. They're also going to be opening a, uh, a spot just next door, uh, later this month, it's going to be called hippo and hippo is basically going to be a coffee bar. That's just what you need is another coffee bar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm all no, for I, it. I'm dead serious yeah. because it's so busy in which Houston, like it's, yeah, I went to, um, a Humphrey Street coffee the other day, and I it took me probably twenty minutes to find parking before I can even get my coffee. Yeah, that is uh, yeah. Wedgwood Houston's biggest problem. But the thing is, is going to be is mostly parking, free, which is which, is, which is, is awesome. Yeah, so many people will probably they don't mind spending the, those few minutes to find their spot because they know they're not going to have to pay for it. Um, that would be great if Wedgwood Houston could continue that. Uh, or, or at least if somebody in this, uh, in the surrounding neighborhoods of Nashville does introduce paid parking, like a dollar an hour, yeah, yeah. people like would keep pay it, it very affordable. Yeah. 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 People would pay it. People would still be able to make money because parking garages all over the United States, even in bigger cities are like a dollar an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nashville just, it's not, expensive. not great. Uh, so they're also going to serve coffee. They're going to have wine, local goods. So it's going to be like this little storefront thing. Uh, they're going to have grab and go meals, local meats, ice cream, and on tap espresso martinis. That sounds nice. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever had an espresso martini. Um, present tense. They're yeah. going to be open. That's hippo. Uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm talking about present tense. They open May 16th. Yeah. So the hours are interesting. So I wanted to mention those. Uh, they'll be open Tuesday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday, 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday, 10 to 3 and 4 to 11. Interesting. So we, we have some interesting hours here, um, but they're they're looking to kind of serve that uh, very aggressive seeking uh, dinner community of Nashville and the brunch community. Those are those hours that you're searching for, uh, for present tense. So I'm excited. We'll update you when we uh, try it because those, that omelet, um, I I looked up the type of omelet on Google. It looks incredible. I'm probably going to have one of those pretty soon. That sounds pretty good. And you know what else sounds pretty good? A hundred layer donut from $5 bakery. (laughs) That sounds amazing right now. Uh, They're opening a new location at fifth and Broadway. It's going to be on the second floor of fifth and Broadway, right outside of the assembly food hall. So I think that was that spa thing that was right there. You remember like you're walking up, walk up the staircase and you're going up to the bathrooms. Yes, no, there's something there. Well, so if you go, if you're in going there. into the North Assembly Food Hall, not the South. Yeah, I think there was like a spa hair thing there. You remember those weird chairs, those hanging chairs? Yeah, yeah. There was something still there when we were there the other day. 
in that area. I wonder if that's the same spot because I think there's only two retail spots on that second floor. Yeah, there's a clothing area. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah, and that's that's still there. Um, it has to be that. Are you sure it's on the second floor? Uh, according to the National Business Journal, yes. Hold on, let me because check. the second floor seems very interesting. five dollars named for Meeks dollars will be on the second floor of Fifth and Broad above Ariat. But above Ariat. Um, so it's either that clothing store. It's one of them. We'll find out. So Ariat, if you go directly above that, that is right in front of the entrance to the. Uh, Renaissance Hotel before you walk into Assembly Food Hall. No, the Renaissance Hotel is back a little bit further, closer to the escalator. So it's either it's either the oh, there, spa there's or another, the clothing. There's, an, there's a back entrance to the Renaissance Hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, we exited there. I think as we just need to go you, down the Fifth and Broad. I know we, 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 need to, we need to do it because there there's uh, uh, there are some elevators uh, that go up right next to Ariat, mm-hmm. um, and it goes up, and then there are the doors into Assembly Food Hall. And then, but there are also doors that go. Oh, there is a retail spot mm-hmm. right there. I know exactly where you're talking about yep. now. I think you're right. I forgot that that retail place existed. I had to do a little mind map. And then there, and then there's another retail spot behind the escalators. And then there's the building management company. Yeah, in front of the escalators. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So I'm that excited. Is, that I, is a very popular spot. I know. I, I feel bad for Donut Distillery. Well. <laughs> They're in assembly food hall, so yeah. it's going to be a it's different a little, experience. A, yeah. The thing is, is uh, Donut Distillery is not going to have the lines like Five Daughters. I think. I don't know if they've strategically planned. It's going to be a terrible place for a line. It's going to be a terrible place for a line. It's going to be the Hattie B's line for Five Dollars. I was literally at Twelve South with clients two weeks ago, <laughs> and guess how long? Take an estimate of how long we waited for donuts at oh, Five Dollars. No. Over an hour? No, it's about twenty-eight minutes. Ooh, that's yeah, but for, still for like, donuts. Yeah, we were outside of the door, like on the stairs at 12 <laughs> South. We were outside of the door and we waited 28 minutes to get in. So maybe they'll speed things up and have more than just one cash register. 12 South is a little tight because it's in an old house. Yeah, so, I don't know. Uh, Edley's Barbecue also, also opened in Berry Farms down in Williamson County. Dude, they are expanding. They are expanding. So fast and they're doing a lot of social media content so if you haven't followed edley's barbecue they're talking about all of these recipes and like how you can make this stuff at home and use their recipes it, it's it's pretty cool um and then can, some you, other, can you talk a little bit about berry farms and where that is uh so berry farms is in williamson county in franklin uh it's off of carruthers and then you go back um do you know where the nissan headquarters is yes it's like yeah. that neighborhood that's back behind that area gotcha. uh, it's a relatively new area i think all the homes are about 10 years old or so somebody comment below they probably know a little bit more about berry farms uh but there's a, a brand new Publix there. there there's a lot of restaurants going there but it's like the one of the prime areas of residential in franklin and i do i know we we were uh gonna look uh just continue but uh, i wanted to mention neighbors is moving into where city fire was in the gulch so right there on it's, it's uh, that corner division, division and twelve, twelve, yep. yeah, yeah. Which okay. is that's that's actually going to be a really good location for them. Does City Fire did they have outdoor seating? I think the sidewalks were very limited. Yeah, right? I don't think they did. I never went neighbors, into City Fire. Neighbors over in West Nashville, um, off of is it Murphy Road, I believe. Uh, they have really good outdoor seating. And I think the neighbors in Germantown has really good outdoor seating as well. So that's exciting. Um, th- another thing that we saw on Instagram yesterday is Hattie Jane's Creamery is opening in Donaldson. I am super excited. I texted the wife immediately <laughs> and I said, this is going to be dangerous because I've been waiting for a really good ice cream parlor to come to Donaldson. Yeah, because the closest would be the Sip, Snowing, uh, Sip Cafe. No, uh, in, Cotton Continent Snow over by the, the, the Gaylord. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah. But I'm super excited. Hattie Jane's, it's opening right next to uh, Sunflower Bakery. So it's going to be on the main strip. They are going to be busy. I hope they have walk-up windows Dude, too. That is such a good um, spot for them. Good for them. The thing that I don't know if Hattie Jane's has this. Have you had Katie's Ice Cream in Dixon? No, because I went when it was snowing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they were not open. So Katie's Ice Cream, I went there uh, a couple weeks ago, and they were closed on Sundays. 
But I still was able to have their ice cream because they have an ice cream vending machine that you pay $5 for a pint for. You just tap your credit card and you pint get a just pint? comes out. A pint of ice cream or like a half pint of ice cream. Wow. And uh, like the the ones that are in Kroger that uh, the brand yeah, Halo, so, uh, the yeah, like Halo a, Top. Yeah, kind of. They have, so a, yeah. a little bit smaller than that. So it's maybe like a half pint. Yeah. Uh, but I was still able to get their ice cream even though they were closed. So I'm hoping... Uh, Hattie Jane's will have a ice cream vending machine at that location because uh, it's going to be so dangerous. All right, let's talk about the food at the wash. Uh, two new restaurants are opening by uh, Gracie uh, and Chad. Both of them own uh, Eastside Bon Me and they own Eastside Pho. But they're opening two other restaurants at the wash. What are these, Aaron? Yeah, so we talked about this just a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago, um, but a... A uh, a little bit of an update is coming out from the Business Journal. Um, they they own now. You are here hospitality, um, but the restaurants they're opening inside of the Wash are uh, Suiza and SS uh, Guy. I'm probably saying that right or wrong. It's G A I, um, and both of these are going to be located inside of the Wash. Um, uh, Chef Chris Byard, I think he is the guy who's mainly been behind east side bon me he's going to be the executive chef um of this uh, of all of this yeah okay so he's the executive chef of east side bon me his wife emma uh, will lead ss guy chris will lead suiza um so this is going to be really cool um i want to make sure no so chris and his wife will lead ss guy and uh gracie and chad founders of east side bon me and east side fa will lead Suiza. Uh, Suiza will be inspired by San, uh, San Francisco's Mexican-American food. It's named for the street food Super Quesadilla Suiza. Uh, let me, uh, but it's let me spelled a little throw bit differently. This photo up. Look at this quesadilla. That thing is amazing you looking. know that reminds is me that artichokes yeah that's artichokes inside of that thing. That reminds me of when we go to Red 615 mm -hmm. Kitchen and we get the hot chicken crunch wrap. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has a little bit of that um, that look to it. Look at how much it's, cheese is in that thing. Yeah, uh, that's wow. that that is that is incredible. Um, and then SS guy has the motto same same but different chicken. The menu will offer Thai style uh, guy yang, mm -hmm. which is grilled chicken, and guy Todd, which is fried chicken, which will be served with sticky rice, shallots, um, tamarind chili fish sauce, and aromatic chili vinegar. Uh, some tum and charred eggplant salad are among other menu items. We should just do an episode of us naming foreign menus because I'm going to butcher everything. We'll, we'll just do a Nashville translation. Yeah. <laughs> for all of these. Have you, have you had Thai style chicken? Like the grilled chicken? Yes. Okay. It's yes. so good. Yes. I it's had it. So I had it at the, the place that uh, burned down across from Nissan Stadium. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> what five or six years ago. Yeah, that was, a, that lo burnt that was down. a long time ago. And you're like, is this ever going to be developed? Eventually, it's going to uh, be developed. Uh, at least I'm just happy that they closed off Limelight. Oh, yeah. Dude, that place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, driving past Limelight on Friday nights, you're like, okay, do I need to have bulletproof windows? Yes. So